Hi, Rabbit Inventor here. I wanted to make this video. I know I haven't done one in ages, but I wanted to tell you about something that is, I think is incredibly cool and brand new. And I haven't even seen anyone mention this on YouTube yet. So it's so hot off the press, I, I can't quite describe it. So, so here we go. So uh, I'm hoping that most uh, most people watching know about Espressive Systems. They, well, they started out, or at least I came across them when they made the uh, ESP8266, which is, to be honest, a very cool uh, little chip. It's um, an MCU and Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi chip that was incredibly accessible and was generally adopted by both the maker and engineer communities broadly. Uh, later on they brought out the ESP32 which was not only did it implement Bluetooth as well as Wi-Fi, it also offered a 32-bit dual-core uh, processor with a big chunk of RAM and a big chunk of ROM and it's, it's everywhere, it's quite ubiquitous now. I constantly see uh, companies left, right, and centre um, putting the modules into into products. I think it's a great chip. I think the whole platform is really good. I love how it's now implemented into the uh, Arduino environment. Uh, those of you who don't really know what Arduino is, it's a development environment specially directed at people that are kind of starting out with electronics and microcontrollers. So the big news, the big news that uh, it first appeared on the 27th of November this year is that Espressive have taken all of their architecture that they use in the uh, in the latest ESP32, so the S, uh, the S2, I'm going to say, I may be corrected on this, but on the S2, They've taken all the IP blocks from that, all the uh, componentry from that, and instead of having their regular dual-core um, processor on there, they're going to start using a RISC-V-based processor. This is really, really big news, and I kind of want to delve a little bit deeper into um, what's going on, what I'm personally doing about it, and why I'm super excited about it being now a RISC-V compliant uh, instruction set. Now, so RISC-V, I'm not gonna go into too many details about what it is. Uh, there are a ton of videos online describing exactly what the RISC-V uh, instruction set architecture is. What gets me excited about it is all of a sudden, instead of their regular uh, Extensia processing core, which is proprietary, and there's not that much information about it, and the tool chain is also a proprietary stack, RISC-V is the instruction set is open, which this means that there are so many tools out there that can compile code for RISC-V processors. All of a sudden, this is no longer uh, limited to just using the one tool chain. You can use any tool chain that is compatible with RISC-V processors. I think that is that's incredible. That's a great step forward. I've seen RISC-V coming more and more. Um, ubiquitous over the last well over the last 12 months I've seen about five or six companies that have decided to use RISC-V um, ISA based processors on their products I, I am all for that I think it's very very exciting I think it's a big big thing for both open source and software transparency and a lot of other things besides so uh, Let's have a bit of a dig into how this news came out. Uh, a 
couple of things that a uh, couple of got you gotchas that have seemed to have cropped up as time's going on so let's have a look into it so this is it this is the big thing um, it's the ESP32 dash C C3 and here we go so it is ESP32 single core okay Actually, this isn't where I wanted to be in. I wanted to be in when I first ran into this information. So this came from uh, uh, Rudy at Embedded Home. And I suddenly saw this information. Ultra low power SOC risk v call. Well, that was me in straight out. Uh, it says it's... ESP8266 pin compatible. We'll, we'll dig into that because there's some gotchas with that one. And this was the information provided. So here we, here we go. So this is, take a note of this because this is the pre-release version 03 um, data sheet. This is not the most up-to-date data sheet. Um, here we go, a RISC-V RISC -V core here, which is very, very exciting. The, uh, so we've got our usual Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, RISC-V core. Here it's saying running it up to 160 megahertz. So this is an interesting piece of information that it's supposed to come with a USB 1.1, USB UART converter and USB JTAG converter. So two of the pins, if we go further down, further down, further down, have, here we go, so GPIO 18 and GPIO 19, let me uh, just highlight that. Right here, GPIO 18 and GPIO 19 are USB pins. Now, here's the problem with this and uh, why we're kind of digging into it. That is, is great. It's great to have onboard USB debug. It is a nice approach. It's a far more modern approach. Uh, the problem comes is we'll go down into the actual information on it and let's see there we go USB device ESP32 contains a USB device module that supports 1.1 full speed well 1.1 full speed is about 2 megabytes per second, 2 megabits per second, which is actually quite slow. But it does have a CDC uh, serial port driver or JTAG driver besides endpoint 0 and 3 endpoints and 2 out endpoints, packet led, 64 bytes. Sending commands to the USB device, the host can boot the chip in download mode or reset all digital peripherals except the USB device. That is really interesting, but what becomes the problem is if we look at the most recent data sheet, so this is the pre-release data sheet version 4.0, we will find that the USB device has been removed. It was here on the list. Now there's good reason to that. If I come back, uh, this is something that uh, John Lee from Expressive has, uh, has cleaned up. Apparently there was a small mistake on the silicon, which they'll be fixing in January and will be the USB provider will be on the silicon 
in February, which which is great news. I'm glad that they're fixing it. I think it's a very good addition to the uh, to the system. But these these mistakes happen. Unfortunately, it confused me a lot at the time. <laughs> Maybe a slightly uh, over the top tweet. So the other thing to note is, oh, see this is good, they're going to release three chips, which is one that has no internal flash, one that has four megabytes inter internal flash, another one that has a industrial, temp industrial temperature range that also has four megabyte flash, so that's good. Now if we look News articles have been generally saying that the ESP C3 is pin compatible with the 8266. From what I can tell, I'm not sure why why they're saying this. Because it from what I've seen of the data sheets, it doesn't look that way. In fact, if we look at LNA1, and then look at this is the data sheet from the SP8266EX. And we'll have a look at pin one on here. Same package, same package size, but LNA, which is your uh, analog radio, is actually on pin two here, where it was on pin one on the C3. Now, these are still early data sheets. We don't know exactly what's going to be happening. So we'll just keep an eye on that. So this kind of boils down to what um, I doing. Well, I love the chip. I love the idea behind it. I like the chips that Espressive make. I always have done from the very beginning. So I have decided to, even though this chip hasn't been launched, I'm working on a breakout board for it. Now, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm using the CH552 as both a handler to put it into, de into debug and download mode and to do the UART to USB conversion or USB to UART conversion. But I've also put in USB select jumpers on the back. Oh, if you have a look, that's the uh, that's the description from Wikipedia of Risk V, which I thought was quite cool on the back. But uh, so the jumpers up the top here, and just highlight them. So these jumpers are up the top, they'll select whether you want to use the uh, CH552 to handle USB or whether you want it to patch through to directly to the ESP32. So I can tell that the ESP32-C3 is going to be super popular. John Lee with, from Espresso Systems, who's been incredibly helpful on clearing up like what's going on with uh, with this. Uh, very vocal. They're, they're telling us exactly what's going on. They are, at the moment, offering free dev boards. It also says, if we dig into here, it says he's receiving too many emails to handle at the minute. So they're assembling a team to handle the emails for the dev boards. This is going to be insanely popular. Insanely popular. I hope this information has been really helpful. I urge you to go and check out the Espressive website and see what I'm going on about. Uh, check out the videos on RISC-V. And if you like my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I know I'm a bit short on videos right now, but there will be more coming. And thank you and good night.